Hi there, it's Roy Breton here from Countryman's View. I hope you're doing well. Today I have a photograph of a sort of classic Church of England, although this looks more like a cathedral. I was looking for a, for a photograph and came across all sorts of beautiful churches. And uh, I thought it's sad, because my headline reads, reads, why does the Church of England continue to bless sin? And you look at these beautiful buildings that were made for a purpose to teach, to teach the gospel of Jesus and to teach the good news. But sadly, it seems like the Church of England wants to continue to bless sin. Now, yesterday I was looking at a tweet from an acquaintance of mine, from David Vance, who talks a lot of sense, and uh, he says, are they trolling us with his name, man? Another example of how unchristian the Anglican church leadership has become. Church of England appoints Rachel Mann as first first a transgender archdeacon and here David's run at David on David's website which is davidvance.net he's written um, headline Anglican Church Goes Satanic and he's also you can also see a podcast here you can actually play it through his website I, I was actually listening to it earlier because I always like to hear what the people's take is on a, is on a subject but my, my take is certainly from a Christian point, point of view and um, here we have in the Telegraph, um, Church of England appoints Rachel Mann as first transgender archdeacon. The novelist, poet and vicar has been, been appointed to the senior position in a move to, described by, by LGBT plus campaigners as a beacon of hope. Now, maybe that's what they think it's a beacon of hope, but here I have a hard copy of the Bible. And to me, this is the book of truth. This is the book of life. We don't, we can't change what's been written here. In here, there's anointed pages of God's word. We can't change it just because we think we what we we want to sin and we want to make. We think we know better than God's than God and God's anointed servants. And but so many people are doing this now. And I'm thankful that when I said yes to Jesus, I'm going to put my trust in this book. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to turn things around just because I want to do something. I'm going to follow what the word says and, and nothing else. But sadly, the Church of England wants to um, change things. So let's just have a quick look at this. And uh, so, um, so the Church of England has appointed its first transgender archdeacon in a move hailed by LGBT plus campaigners as a beacon of light and hope, as I just read. Um, She's got been appointed Archdeacon of Bolton and Salford, which is, I think, Salford, Manchester, I believe. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, it says in an interview with the Daily Telegraph in 2020, the Archdeacon, who is an also a novelist, poet, vicar, and regular contributor to BBC Radio and Television, I guess she would be, the BBC would love that, particularly on Radio 4's Thought for the Day. So she has become very relaxed about my identity as Christian traditionalist question whether or not she should be regarded as a priest at all. Um, then he goes on to say, however, appointment now, now comes amid bitter division within the Church of England between traditionalists and progressives following an, an historic vote in February in favour of offering blessings to lesbian and gay couples who have already been married or had a civil partnership. And uh, where is it? Um, he said, I'm passionate about helping individuals and communities meet Jesus and follow him and I look forward to serving alongside the people in the archdeaconries of Bolton and Salford as we respond to God's joyous call on our lives. Now all Christians have a call on our life but we can't go around teaching that sin is okay that defeats the whole object of the Bible and God can't bless that. Now I appreciate we all get things wrong and uh, we can come to the cross and God can forgive us I appreciate that, but this is just going totally against what the Bible um, says. And uh, I believe that all these people, sadly, I think all of us struggle with certain things, but these people have a conscience and they know they're doing wrong, but they're just trying to get as many people on their side to try and make them feel better. But we know the kingdom of God doesn't work like that. So let's just have a quick look at some scriptures. And um, here in, in Genesis 1, 27 to 28, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. 
Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that moves on the earth. So God created male and female. That Nothing extra. He didn't ask us to change sex or anything like that. He, he created male and female. Very simple. And it says he blessed them, <laughs> which is amazing. So we come to Deuteronomy 22. Five, and it says a woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man nor shall a man put on a woman's garment for all who do so are an ab abomination to the Lord your God and rightly so and uh, you know it's a very common sense thing we like a, a woman to look feminine to look ladylike and we like a man to look look like a man um, for very very straightforward and then if we move on to 1 Corinthians 6 um, nine, verses 9 to 10 um, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not, do not be deceived Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterators, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves Nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God And this is why I want people to know the truth because we can't just go on sinning. If we want to um, inherit the kingdom of God, which if we believe in God, we will. And um, But I, I want these people to know that you just can't go around doing everything you want to. Um, it's just not, it's not biblical, it's not right. And we, we, we've seen the problem it causes. But sadly, the world is blessing sin, including the Church of England. So finally, I've got a scripture here, James 1.12, and it says, um, the title is Loving God Under Trials Blessed is the man who endures temptation For when he has been approved He will receive the crown of life Which the Lord has promised to the, all those who love him Now I think we've all been tempted um, At different times in our life But it doesn't make it right And we have to go by what this book says The word, it's all in here If we get temptation Does it line up with scripture or not? If not, if it doesn't Then we've got our answer If it does then we've also got our answer. If we're tempted, if we feel like God's speaking to us and we feel it lines up with Scripture, then it may well be right. But unless it lines up with Scripture, I'm afraid we can't, we can't, um, we can't carry on. And God can't bless that. So if you've got any comments on this, please feel free to comment. And if you're not a Christian and you're sitting on the fence and you'd like to be one and you'd like to be given the gift of eternal life and much more, I have a prayer for you which reads, Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you as Lord and Saviour of my life. I repent of all my sins, and I ask you today to take over complete control of every aspect of my life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, and you meant it, it means the Spirit of God has moved in, and uh, you've been given the gift of eternal life, and much more. However, it is important that we all need to read the Word, whether we're a new Christian or an old Christian. We need to read the Word. We need to... Uh, we need to have people who are kingdom-minded, people around us. So it's good to join a small group and a church. And also just make sure you find a strong church. Um, uh, there's so many people trying to preach a watered down gospel that don't go for anything less than the full biblical gospel. We don't want the watered down gospel. We want the full gospel, the truth of Jesus. So thank you very much for watching. I'm here to help. Please feel free to comment and to like this video. And uh, until next time, have a great day.